Greetings, welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Uh, I want to sincerely apologize for not being able to come live at the uh, scheduled time and also for not being available last week. I traveled and I couldn't just make it. I returned just this week. Let us pray. God, thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for your grace and for everything you're doing for us. Thank you for the gift of life. Looking into the world right now, there are lots of troubles. This world is held by your word and by your power. It's held in place, held together. It is not because your hand is weak. It's not because your word has failed. It is because we know not, neither do we understand, that we are gods in this world. That is why the foundation of the earth, the foundations of the earth are out of course. The earth is checking, not because Satan is here, but because humanity has given his heart to folly foolishness. Instead of us to have dominion, a lot of us have left off our place of dominion. And we have become dependent instead of being in charge. Lord, open our eyes to see the deception of the devil and the attack on your word. Spirit of the Lord, we ask that you speak to us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please, if you have not subscribed to this channel and if you have not liked our page on Facebook, please like our page. The narrow is Christ for all nations. And the Lord God will bless you as you share our videos. And if you subscribe, please don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can receive video whenever we make any post. So that you can get the not you can receive updates. Today we are talking about satanic deceptions and attacks on God's word. Satanic deceptions and attack on God's word. Why is it that our politicians are so powerful in deception? From time to time you see citizens voting into power. I know it's not everybody that they vote into power that are that is actually in power. Some of them stole elections. But why is it that people are evil and they continue to vote for them? There are people who shouldn't even be in politics, who shouldn't even be in any position of leadership because of their open corruption. Some of them don't even hide their corruption. But why is it that they keep finding themselves in the position of leadership? How do they make their way through? It is because of deception. Some of them are, have these oratory skills. They can talk and convince people to vote for them. There are some people, you will become their victim if you are not careful, so the best thing is not even to listen to them. Brainwashing people doesn't just start and end in a day. It is a process. It is a continuous thing. Satan is winning the hearts of many people, as a matter of fact, majority of the world's population today have been won over by Satan in one way or the other. Even in Christianity, majority of people who claim to be Christians have been won over by the devil. Why? It is because of deception. Someone once said, if Satan had appeared on earth with horns, ugly face, black face, and um, with a long tail, 
and the long tail that has the sting of a, of, of a scorpion, nobody would have followed him. No wonder the Bible says that Satan masqueraded himself as an angel of light. Why? Because he wants to deceive people. Why is it that someone that was condemned is a, an archangel that was condemned in heaven and thrown down to the earth can successfully lead majority of the world's population astray? Why? It is the power of deception. And it doesn't just it doesn't just deceive people, but before he deceives people, he attacks the word of God. That's exactly what he's doing. He attacks God's word. Even from the very first day man fell, it was because of Satan's attack on God's word. God put Adam and Eve on earth and he gave them commands. He gave them his word. For Satan to succeed, he needs to attack the word of God first. During the time of Adam and Eve, it is the same thing he did. He attacked the word of God. During the time of Jesus Christ, the same thing. He attacked the word of God. But thank God Jesus Christ did not obey him. He did not fall for his deception. Even now, Satan attacks the word of God. He brings his deception and launches attacks on God's word in order to convince people to follow him. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that there is only one Satan in the world? Almost everybody, if not everybody, believes that there is one devil, one Satan, all over the world. There are many evil spirits, many demons. But everybody does not believe that there is only one God. A lot of people believe that there are many gods. Across different religions, they believe that there are many gods, but only one devil. Why? Why only one devil, but many gods? You can't counterfeit what is already fake. You can't fake what is fake. If you have a fake product in the market, I tell you that fake product will remain there forever. Nobody is going to fake it. But if you have a good product in the market, you will have a lot of counterfeits. Nobody counterfeits a counterfeit money. But people go ahead and counterfeit, they counterfeit genuine money and they produce counterfeit money, counterfeit coins, counterfeit notes. That's exactly what is happening in the world today. And for you to believe that a particular note is genuine, it must have the best resemblance of the genuine note. Do you think that people just sell their souls to the devil? They don't just wake up one day and just sell their souls to the devil. Something happens before they go to that land. Today, there are many denominations, different kinds of doctrines, conflicting doctrines. Some of them are actually because of different understanding of God's word. People seeing the word of God from different perspectives. Some because of ignorance. But there are major things, major doctrinal issues, doctrinal beliefs that we must not see from different perspectives. For instance, we believe that God is one and that he is three persons in one. is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are not three gods. So if you claim to be a Christian and you say there are three gods, then you were wrong. 
you must not see that from a different perspective then again you have to believe you must believe that jesus christ came and died he came in person he put on human flesh i mean and died he came through a woman the virgin mary and it wasn't because of the man and woman relationship not as a result of the man and the woman relationship but he came as a result of the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, of a shadow in Mary, and Mary conceived supernaturally. And we must also believe that Jesus Christ lived a sinless life, and that he died for our sins and rose again and ascended into heaven before the apostles, and that he's going to come back to judge the world, including Satan, who was Lucifer. These are major beliefs that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, and also a rewarder of those who are disobedient. These are major doctrinal issues that we must not see from different perspectives. We must believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. But these major beliefs have faced a lot of attacks, even within the church. Satan tries to attack the word of God. For instance, there are people who believe that Jesus Christ had already returned. This is an attack on the word of God. We as believers must be careful to guide the doctrine. We must guide the doctrine. We must guide the faith, the doctrine of the apostles. Let's read the word of God. Second Peter chapter two, verses one, two and three. This is our test. We have actually have two Bible verses for our test. But there were false prophets among the, among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Yeah, a lot of people are denying Jesus Christ today. And brought upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, with vain, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumber slumber it not so you see that this word of peter has come to pass even in the old testament there were attacks on the true prophets on the true word of god on the written word of god and even in the time of the apostles there were attacks deception now let me tell you one thing, that the most powerful tool of the devil today is deception. And he doesn't just deceive people, he attacks the word of God. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that there are hundreds of translations of the Bible? Why is it that people can't actually agree with just a few translations? But from time to time, we continue to have, even as we are talking now, there are new translations that are in process right now. I'm not talking about translation into different languages, into different local languages. But I'm talking about translation into English and other major languages. Because there are people who are genuine. There are other people, most of them, right now are not genuine they want to twist the word of god to 
fit into their lives. There are lots of people who don't have that ability. They don't have the resources to translate God's word. So what they do is that they are very cunning, very eloquent, and they attack the word of God by giving it different interpretations. And it is a problem today in Christianity. A lot of people give the word of God different private interpretations. I remember I did a video some years ago, which I posted on Egola Yupuna Global Outreach. A young man who called himself a man of God, a pastor, an apostle, he was teaching that fornication is no longer considered as sinful because Jesus Christ has died for our sins. Very painful. How can people teach that the very things that made Jesus Christ the very sinful things, that made Jesus Christ to come and die, death on the cross, face humiliation? How can people wake up to say that these very things are now the same things that people are free to do? So why did Jesus actually come to die? Let's look at the second test for today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3, 4, and 5, and 24. Now, I know why I'm bringing this passage, because the disciples asked Jesus a particular question. Three questions in one. And what he did was to quickly warn the disciples an attack on his word and deception. They asked him, now let me read verse 3 following. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So Jesus Christ was actually teaching them in chapter 23 about end time events the destruction of jerusalem and about the second coming so the disciples asked him these questions these things he talked about what tell us about these things when shall these things be what is the time what shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the signs of the end of the world? Three questions. So the whole of the chapter 24, he was actually answering these three questions and also teaching the disciples. Now look at what Jesus Christ said. The first thing he said in verse 4, and Jesus Christ answered and said unto them, Take heed, be careful. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. For there shall arise first Christ and first prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Wow. This is a problem. Deception. And attacking the very word of God that's supposed to guide us. If you want to deceive someone, give him a false description of his destination. And this is exactly what the devil is doing. Even the Roman Catholic Church attacked the word of God. They wouldn't allow people to actually read the Bible. Recently, I learned that there is this Bible that is called the Slave Bible. The slave masters that came to Africa, they came with a gun on their left and with a Bible on their right hand. So they came to colonize us and some of them also came with Christianity. 
although there were places like Ethiopia, there was Christianity in Ethiopia, Arabia, a long time ago, before Africa was colonized. So you see these people coming to enslave people and carry out slave trade. Before they came, some of them who came with the Bible, with the word, with Christianity, they had to edit the word of God and remove some chapters and remove some verses of the Bible. Not chapters actually, but some verses of the Bible. Verses that condemn slavery. They remove them. They attack the word of God for personal gains, for selfish reasons. This is what a lot of people are doing today. They twist the word of God. And because people so much believe them, and they must believe them too because many people today are wicked. They don't like to believe the truth. So it is very, very easy to mislead them. Because they believe them, they lead a lot of people astray. Now, let's actually look at what happened in Genesis chapter 3, the deception and the attack on the word of God. Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had been. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Look at the attack on God's word. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. These people, Adam and Eve, were already like God. They were created in the image of God and after God's own likeness. So there was nothing like ye shall be as gods. So Satan attacked the word of God before he could deceive Eve. At first, he raised a conversation. He said, had God, yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of every, every tree of the garden? The Bible says that Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field. The serpent, the ancient serpent. So you see the way he threw the question. The same thing happened when Jesus Christ was facing temptation after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Satan quoted the Bible. He quoted Psalm 91, 11 and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, they shall bear thee up in their, in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. The person we call Satan today, Satan the devil, was actually in heaven. There are lots of things he knows that we don't know. We don't know actually how many thousands of years Satan existed, not Satan, Satan was never in heaven. Lucifer existed in heaven before he sinned and become Satan. We don't know. When Satan fell, much of his knowledge about God was retained. God did not take all 
the knowledge from him. He retained a lot of his wisdom. He was an intelligent being. And today the Bible says he is intelligent. So he tries to use the word of God. He attacks the word of A lot of times he doesn't just attack the word of God directly. But what he does is that he, in course of deceiving people, he presents the word of God in a form of adulterated truth. Satan has no problem if everybody in the world starts setting up ministries. He has no problem. Satan is not threatened by the millions of churches, denominations of churches in the world. He's not threatened. But the moment you start preaching the truth, the moment you start teaching the whole truth, he loses his sleep. Satan is not troubled by the numerous miracles happening across the world. Even if, if you are performing miracles, if you don't live for the truth, if you don't teach the truth, Satan will even really allow people to allow chains of his captives to be loose in your church. Because he would want people to follow you because he knows you are on the wrong path and that whoever follows you will end up in destruction. It is not every miracle that happens that is by the power of God. Some of them were demonically inspired. It is not every time you say, Satan, lose your grip. And Satan loses his grip that is actually by the power of God or by the power of the devil. There are times if Satan knows you are fake, he could allow some miracles to happen. Maybe those in chains, he could lose in their chains so that you will be happy that you are right with God. Not knowing that you are on your way to the fire of damnation. He could make you happy so that you will continue to get lost more and more. I remember some years ago when I told a man who was around uh, between 80 and 90 years old, he was 80 years plus, in, probably in his late 80s. I told him that God said he's very angry with you, that you have to repent and change. This man laughed at me, he told me, I come to church very early, I'm one of those who come to church very early. And God provides for my needs, how can you say God is angry with me? As a matter of fact, if I don't have money, if I ask God, he gives me money. So how dare you say that God is angry with me? I learned that this man some of his children were avoiding him because he was into witchcraft. As a matter of fact, before I gave him the message, I think before I gave him the message, I already knew that some of his children were avoiding him because of his involvement in witchcraft. I had to go to him, gave him the harsh message from the Lord, harsh warning from the Lord, but he laughed at me. This is exactly what happens. Sometimes Satan doesn't pursue Satan. Satan sometimes may decide to relapse his fight against you and make you feel comfortable just to make you feel at home that, oh, God is with me. I'm not saying that God doesn't give things to people who are not perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But there are lots of times that Satan stops pursuing some people because they are already in his cage. Satan is expert in attacking, is an expert in attacking the word of God. 
He uses deception. But do you know that deceivers are very popular? They are very, very popular. Yes, they are popular because we have, we are living in the end time when most people do evil. That is the truth. We can continue to paint the truth. The truth is that most people in the world today are wicked. We have a lot of problem in our society today because the more godlessness we have in the society, uh, the more godlessness people, the people of the world embrace, the more chaos we have in the society. Even when there was no Christianity in places like Africa, we were not having this level of security when we were building our houses. I, I, I wasn't actually here. But I have lived in a village. Uh, I, we moved to that village in 1998. That was where I actually uh, concluded my primary school education. Oboko village. I remember very well that we were the the kitchen we were staying we, we had no place to stay when we moved down, me and my mom. And later my siblings came. My siblings, two siblings came to join us. One day stay for long, not to leave. When we got there, we were actually staying in a kitchen. The kitchen, part of the kitchen was, uh, there was no wall. It was uh, a mother house. There was no door. That was where we lived until we got our own mother house that we built with touches. Touches. Um, um, grasses you used to uh, cover the roof of a building as a particular tree uh, I think it's called raffia palm so we cut the leaves and use them to prepare tashes because we couldn't afford to buy zinc that's my background that's one of the reasons I choose to give almost everything away because I told my God when I was suffering that if you bless me in this world, I'm not going to live a luxurious life. I've said this several times. I have different videos. I say this several times that I'm going to give money to the poor and use my money to support the work of God and not to amass wealth everywhere. I'd rather amass wealth in heaven. So what I'm saying is that in that same village, before I left there, I left there 2006, you have to lock your doors. You have to lock your doors. It wasn't as safe as when we went there. Between 1998 to 2006, a lot of things changed. Insecurity crept in. Stealing, theft crept in. Within a few years. When I got there, when we got there, there was only one church. But before we left, there were two churches. There were more Christians in that village. But sin also increased too. It's not about having religious people around. How godly are they? So the more godlessness, the more godlessness we have in our society, the more chaos we are going to have. And because people don't want to hear the truth. They have been given over. They have been given over by the Lord so that they can be deceived. Actually, these false prophets are 
judgment upon the world because of their sinful ways and all the atrocities atrocities they commit against the law and against humanity and the earth so god decided to give them up to their own lust and to be deceived as a way of judging them now let's look at second timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time we come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. This is exactly what is happening today. Um, there was a time whereby even in a society, in a society of people uh, from different religions, it wasn't allowed for people to just wear anything. It was an abomination in developed societies. I'm not talking about uncontacted people who have their own barbaric culture. That's not what I'm talking about. Even in the 90s, in the 19th century, there were laws. Even in the US that prohibited people from wearing some things in public but as godlessness increased some of those things people were getting arrested for which they were wearing in public today some of those things are allowed in some churches things that the civil society used to frown at are now being allowed, some of them are being allowed in many of these churches who have compromised their standards today. And I know brothers who have stopped going to church because of lust. Not because they have the problem of lust, but because of the environment of lust they couldn't stand. Even some ladies too, they couldn't stand the environment of lust. Not in the nightclub, but in a holy, supposed holy assembly of holy saints of God who have been washed from their sins. It's ridiculous. But this is not funny. But do you know that churches where people are allowed to put on anything, they have large congregations. That is the truth. People now heap for themselves. They heap for themselves t-shirts because they have itching ears. Do you know that some people actually query me and i remember last year a man was it early this year or last year a man was very angry with me he's a man of god he was very angry with me because i don't believe in the doctrine of once saved always saved he told me i'm scaring people away from repenting that i'm preaching heresy that i'm a false teacher who is a false teacher the one who is encouraging people to live in sin or the one that is saying, if you are born again, you need to bear the fruit of repentance. If you have been regenerated, you have to live the life of regenerated soul. Your character has to be that of the new man. 
and not of the old nature. A lot of people get really angry with me that I am too strict, I'm too hard, I'm scaring sinners away. The same gospel that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and people were caught to the heart. And they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? How can we escape the judgment of God? This is the same gospel that John the Baptist preached and people went to him in the, far, in, in the wilderness. It's the same gospel we preach today. And sinners are not even convicted in their hearts. But are rather encouraged to continue in their sins. Look at what Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 6 verse 26. He said, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For this is how their ancestors treated the first prophets. Do you know one of the biggest challenges of prophets like Isaiah, prophets like Jeremiah, prophets like Hosea, Amos? Do you know the problem they face? One of their biggest problems were actually was actually false prophets. Like Jeremiah. Jeremiah would say one thing, and you have other hundreds of prophets saying the opposite thing and convincing the kings that Jeremiah was lying. Even when Jeremiah was saying, if you don't repent, all of you will be taken into captivity. There were prophets who were saying, no, we will not go into captivity. The Lord is with us. The Bible warns that when they shall say, peace, peace, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Even when the destruction is near, there are people who will still be saying, peace, don't be worried, the Lord is with you. Do you know that there are people who actually encourage scammers? Even in Nigeria, there are pastors who are called Yahoo pastors. They pray for scammers to succeed. Scammers are worse than criminals. They are worse than thieves. If a thief is here in Nigeria, he needs a, he needs a visa to go to another country to steal. If you secure your house very well, a thief cannot break in. For instance, the bank. Thieves cannot break into the bank easily because of physical, uh, the physical security. The place is fortified. But scammers can break into the bank accounts. They can hack a website, a bank, the, the website of a bank website of a financial institution and steal money from there. So they are not even limited by geographical location. They are worse than thieves. But there are pastors who pray for them to succeed. The prophets of old were popular. The false prophets of old were popular. People speak well of them. So also today, the first prophets of today are very, very popular and very, very influential, even in the society. But the politicians like them. Even some unbelievers like them. But if you are a speaker of the truth, you will be hated by all men. You will be persecuted. In fact, there is nothing that has suffered persecution more than the truth and the speaker of the raw truth. Jesus Christ said, What to you when everyone speaks well of you? Remember when I started this message, I talked about politicians. That why do you think that even the ones that are corrupt, they get 
voted into offices, public positions, time after time. Why? Deception. They deceive their followers. Those who are supposed to even hold them accountable, defend them. Let us look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bid them not beware of the living of the bread of bread of the living of bread but of the doctrine of the pharisees and of the sadducees even jesus christ warned his disciples and his followers of false doctrine of deception Today it is horrible what some people preach in different in some churches. It is horrible. Listen, Satan used deception to deceive Adam and Eve. And he succeeded. One hundred percent he succeeded. Even though God had a rescue plan and rescued humanity through Jesus Christ. Satan succeeded. Now, the same Satan that succeeded over Adam and Eve actually came for Jesus Christ, but he did not succeed. He has come for this generation and the generation to come if Jesus Christ tarries. He's succeeding over majority of humans today. Do you know that even after the rapture takes place, Satan will still deceive people to receive the mark of the beast? 666, or the number of his name, is going to deceive people to receive this mark, even after rapture has taken place. Some will be forced some will be deceived if we attack the word of god and confuse the people distort their knowledge of the true word of god and deceive them now this one will scare you do you even know that even after the 1000 reign of christ on earth satan will be released again and he will deceive people and he will be so successful that he will gather millions and millions of people that the bible says that their number are like the sand of the sea let's read the bible deception is very powerful revelation chapter 20 verses 2 and 3 and then 7 to 9 and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless, bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, and he should, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he should, he must be loosed a little season. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of the out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. 
the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Those is going to deceive. There will be so many uncountable. And the Bible describes the multitude of those is going to deceive, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breast of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God and of and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them so you see that even after the millennial millennial reign of Christ Satan will be released after 1,000 years after Jesus Christ had reigned on earth Look at how powerful deception is. And Satan is going to deceive multitudes of people again. Are you deceived already? When last did you test your faith to see if you are still on the path? When last did you test your belief, if you are still in the faith? Examine yourself to see if you are still in the Lord. Examine yourself. Have you been deceived or you are still upholding the truth of the gospel? Are you deceived already? Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for your love and your care. Deception is so strong. Even Satan, the devil, while he was in heaven as Lucifer, was able to deceive one third of the stars of heaven. One out of every three three angels we are deceived by him lord please help us father help us deliver us his children from deception in the name of the lord jesus christ help us to discern his tricks and be faithful to the end lord god help us to be faithful to the end help us to follow you to the end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in you, Lord. We trust in your holy name. Please help us to be faithful to the end. In any way, the devil is deceiving your children. Lord, we ask that you shine the light of your word upon their hearts. Those of us who know the truth, Lord, keep us to yourself. Guide us by the truth. Help us never to fall. Help us never to look back because we have already put our hands to the plow. We pray for as many that have been deceived that Lord, you will help them to know the truth henceforth. In their dreams, in their daily endeavors, Lord, appear to them. May your word that is like a hammer break their stony hearts. Those who are in the chains of false prophets and false teachers, Lord, pull them out by your mighty hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for those who have the truth, who are facing one challenge or the other. Lord, visit them in their challenges. Be their help be their help some who know the truth are looking back lord god help your children uphold your children with your mighty hand lord we pray for those who are supporting this ministry that you support them in every area of their lives open the windows of heaven and rain your blessings upon their lives until there is no more room to receive more in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
Pray for us many that are sick. Pray for us many that are having one problem or the other. Oh Lord God, please attend to their needs. We pray for the world that Lord, let your word burn across the four corners of this world and convert people from deception of different religions. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And always Christ for all nations. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. If you're watching on Facebook, please like and follow our page. May the Lord God bless you. Those of you who have been supporting our ministry, may the Lord bless you and continue to lift you up daily. Thank you and God bless you for watching. Please share this video and as you share this video, may the Lord God Almighty bless you and lift you up in Jesus' name. See you next time. Bye-bye.